Welcome to another episode of a Triple Helix video series, Building a West Coast Drive. In this episode, we will be installing the gearbox onto the drivetrain. Let's get started. So now it's time to do that. Install, actually install the gearbox onto the drive rail. So it's gonna go, gonna go in this orientation on the, on the drive rail. So yeah, so you figured out that these screws that we put in were just temporary to hold the gearbox together. We actually need different ones that are going to reach uh, all the way through the whole the gearbox mounting holes that we've provided on the drive rail. And these are these two right here. Those are <clears throat> ah, that's another problem. <clears throat> um, so we we could uh, replace these with long 1032 screws that reach all the way through that. Um, they'll just be in larger holes than, than uh, needed on the gearbox, or we could open up the gearbox attachment holes on the, on the drive rail. Mm -hmm. What do you wanna do? All right, so go ahead and uh, drill out those, those holes on the drive rail. This, this wall. So now this third operation, now I want you to make sure that you're in both holes mm -hmm. and just go ahead and, and keep drilling straight through. Great, good, that's it. And then squeeze the trigger and pull it out and you're done. Yep. Yep, good. On the side that's the uh, drive, the inside of the the, the side that's going to interface with this, let's let's deburr those holes, so that, that doesn't so that there's no burrs that are going to chew into that. And in the meantime, somebody else can remove these two screws that were just here temporarily to hold the gearbox together. Okay, you need a wrench. Huh. Two two tools for that job. So if you're done with that, the next super exciting thing is. We need to uh, remove the one bearing that is on the side that that's that's on the gearbox side, because this one is going to take its place. This one that we stuck out so it, it extends halfway out. That's going to take its place. All right, so you can swap these these shafts. We should, should loosen these. Yeah, detention on the two sides. Yeah. Yep, figure. So it was too hard because the chains are, are, are too tight. Um, and there's, because the, the two chains inside are offset from each other, if the chains are too tight, then it pulls this, this shaft uh, at, a, at an angle. <clears throat> so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna detension both of the chains, or maybe one of the chains. So now very carefully we're going to push the replacement shaft through all the stack up of all the sprockets and spacers uh, while trying to keep the hex lines aligned the same way. Awesome. That's, that's a high skilled operation. We can put our our uh, bearing on the shaft here, and it should stick out halfway out of out of this out of the drive rail, and it does. Good. So before we we chose this amount of space so that the bearing would stick out halfway out of the gearbox, and it turns out that we have the right amount of space in the in the drive rail so that the bearing can be in that place. So now we're at the point where we can put our uh, let's put the, this amount of space on there, and then we can attach our gearbox. Good. These are the screws for it. These are the nuts for it. We need this. Cool, so now that bearing is 
uh, serving as this interface between the uh, the drive rail and the and the gearbox. In, in generally in machine design, you have really the key is that you have you put two you design to have two bearings on every uh, every rigid element of shafting. Uh, if you put if you put more than more than two on a rigid element of shafting, then you, then you're in a situation where it's over constrained. But in this case, this system is not over constrained because we have there's really just two bearings on on each element of rigid shafting going between these two systems. Put the bearing back on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Slide up the slide down this loosened so, uh, bearing block. So do what? And that'll re retention that one chain that we detensioned earlier. Tighten those. Uh, that one. Yep, and then turn this into a... That's good, just tighten that down. Yep. Sweet. So our cluster shaft, which is the shaft that's in the center of our gearbox, has this feature uh, where it has an extension sticking out that's been cut in half. You can see the cut. It's also been drilled out in the center uh, to a quarter inch diameter, which is the same as the output shaft, there are the shaft on, a, on the encoder we like to use. We use this US Digital S4T encoder, and that's gonna sit right in that spot, and it's gonna get held down by a bracket. And uh, we're also gonna use a shaft collar, regular hex shaft collar from VEX to clamp down on that uh, on that slot that we made in the um, in the end of the shaft and if we were smarter we would have done this before we attached it to the driver rail. Alright, so we we put the shaft of the encoder into our our slotted cluster shaft, and we clamp down on it with a with a shaft collar. And of course, it's buried inside there between all these motors, and that was by design. Um, so now we found a way to use that little space really well, and we also protected our encoder against damage. And uh, we've we li worked through a whole season with with the encoder in there like that um, without any issues. Didn't have to didn't have to access them. And of course, if we did have to access them, all we would have to do is pop off this center wheel, and we'd have this amount of access to our encoders. So nice. So now we have an encoder installed. <laughs> yeah, good. You do it. Awesome. Okay. Now what? And then this snap spacer goes first, on the outside. First that first that eighth inch spacer. And then a, then a snap ring. Yep. And we do that. We put that spacer on there because if there's not a spacer there, if you look at those hubs, it's got a divot in it. See that? See that little divot that's there? Right. And the side load on a wheel, if you just if you just put a snap ring on there, 
that will bend and damage the snap ring. But if you put a spacer there to protect it, then it's okay. Yeah, we're not so concerned with the snap ring. It could damage the snap ring. What we don't want to damage is the groove. If we, if we damage the groove and the snap ring destroys the groove as the wheel is pushing out, then we've got to make it a whole new shaft. Go ahead. Yep. And then normally we would oh, really? we would put a snap ring groove on there, but since this is our very last thing and we don't want to take the time, we're just going to put a shaft collar on. Yeah. And that is the finished drive rail. So now during build season, we're going to do four of those in about a week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose to have one of them in, in three months. Now, three months. <laughs> awesome.